Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion. Uh, I have to apologise first of all because it's entirely my responsibility but the gospel reading that you have in your service sheets is not the one that we'll be using today because it's Bible Sunday so I'm going to use the reading for that day. But on this glorious autumnal morning we meet together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And as we come together into God's presence, we prepare ourselves for worship by praying together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden. We come to ask for his forgiveness and for his peace. God of mercy. We acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do remain seated for our first reading. A reading from Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must be forgiven. Above all, clothe yourself <coughs> with love which binds everything together in perfect harmony and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one holy body and be thankful let the Lord let the word of the word of Christ dwell in you richly teach and admonish one another in the wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms hymns and spiritual songs to god and whatever you do in the word or deed do everything in the name of lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him this is the word of the lord thanks be to god Please do stand for our Gospel reading. <laughs> alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. 
Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth to leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all of these things, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please do sit down. Jesus said, heaven and earth pass away, but my words will not pass away. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we hear in our gospel reading this morning those profound, terrifying, reassuring words spoken by Jesus to his disciples. Heaven and earth pass away, but my words will not pass away. To place this passage in some context, Jesus is speaking during the early part of Holy Week, after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, but before the events of Good Friday. He's now in the temple teaching and warning his listeners about that beautiful building's future destruction and the ensuing apocalyptic fall of Jerusalem as well as the triumphal coming of the Son of Man on clouds of heaven with power and might and great glory. While telling his listeners about all that will not endure or survive this end time, we hear Jesus' words will endure in a way that neither the fig tree nor the stones of the great temple will. This last Sunday of Trinity is Bible Sunday, a day when we are encouraged to reflect in a particularly focused way on how we engage with the scripture, the scripture that we read as individuals and as church family. Reading scripture can sometimes be a challenge, can't it? And sometimes all we hear is what we hear on a Sunday, and that's the particular challenge for us today. If we had prayed the collect from the prayer book for today, it would have been the one from the second Sunday of Advent and from Cramner's prayer book. So I want to read that to you now. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience, and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. This reminds us, I think, this prayer, that all scripture has been inspired by God and is given for our learning, and then prays for us for help to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them. There's so much to unpack in just that one collect. We need God's grace to hear, to really hear what God is saying to us through the scriptures. 
how we interpret and discern God's word, how we do that individually, together with one another, and also in conversation with the church down the centuries. Although it's not enough just to passively hear, we need to engage actively. We need to read the Bible privately as well as when we gather for worship or Bible study together. We also need God's grace to mark scripture. And by that I mean to pay attention and to stick with it, even when it's challenging. I don't know about you, but often there are passages of scripture that we hear, particularly I think at morning and evening prayer, and we just think at the end of it where you say, this is the word of the Lord, and there's just that moment's hesitation before I say, thanks be to God, I think, because they can be really difficult passages sometimes. But to mark the scripture is not to skip the difficult bits or the bits that make us feel uncomfortable, but instead it's to keep striving to hear what God might be telling us even through these difficult passages. And then we need to digest them, to be fed by the nourishment they provide. In other words, what we read needs to make a difference to how we live and how we treat one another. It's important to do just that, not simply to memorise chapter and verse so that we can pluck quotes out of the air to impress those around us. Although, Lord, if you'd like to give me that gift, I'd be very pleased to receive it. But we need to digest the scripture so that they shape us as individuals and as a church family. Paul, writing to the Colossians, says that the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. Obviously, Paul was not living at the time of a pandemic when we're not able to sing, but to sing with our hearts is perhaps, perhaps something different. The way in which we receive God's gift of scripture shapes who we are as Christ's disciples and shapes how we are as his church, how we live together, how we engage with one another and how we worship as gratitude is poured out into prayer and praise. The words of the Collect also make clear that the purpose of hearing, reading, marking, learning and inwardly digesting the words of Scripture is that we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life. Similarly, when Paul talks of the word of Christ dwelling richly in us, he means that we are to be people shaped by Christ's teaching in such a way that we bear fruit, that it is lived out, that it forms us as members of the body of Christ and informs everything we do, including how we treat each other. The teaching of Jesus should underpin everything we do. Every interaction, every meeting, even PCC meetings, every conversation should be underpinned by the insight and understanding that we have gained from Scripture. Allowing the Word of Christ to dwell richly in us means paying proper attention to our habits of worship and prayer as well as to the habits of our lives and relationships. Deepening our prayer and our appreciation of the scriptures helps us all to grow in holiness and frees us to engage more fully as Christ's people. Bible Sunday invites us to pay particular attention to how we read the scriptures it invites us to think about our disciplines of prayer and study and to focus afresh on what it means for us to be people who dwell in his word and that the word might dwell and take root deeply and bear fruit richly within us. 
My prayer is that as a church family, we can grow together to be rooted in scripture. And as we do that, we will bear fruit in every aspect of our life together in this building, but also almost more importantly, out there with those who have yet to discover the Bible. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, let us stand as we come to God and as we declare our faith in him, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do sit or kneel as Richard leaves us in our prayers. whose nature is ever to have mercy and to forgive, receive our humble petitions. And though we be tied and bound with the chains of our sins, let the petitions of thy great mercy loose on us, for the honour of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Mediator and Advocate. Lord, in moments of darkness for the Church, when we seem to be talking to ourselves instead of looking outwards, and are driven with dissensions and difficulties, help us to remember that you have sustained the faith of your people for over 2,000 years, and that, though you will illumine in our path, darkness is not dark to you, for in your sight the night is as light as day. Let us pray for your church throughout the world, and especially for this Diocese of Peterborough. Strengthen Donald our Bishop and John his assistant, and in this parish of Lord Hallows, we pray for the Reverend Paula, the Reverend Christine, and Canon Margaret. We truly remember all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those in positions of authority. We pray particularly for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for those in government who rule on behalf of the people who elect her. May the laws of economics and trade not entirely harden their hearts to the suffering that may be caused as a byproduct of their decisions. And we pray for those whose task it is to translate those decisions into laws and guidance. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, we pray for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus. Bring comfort to those grieving loved ones who have died and peace to those worried fearful and uncertain as the virus spreads again. We pray for governments and authorities who are developing strategies to contain and de deal with the virus, and those in the health services who may be risking their own lives to care for sick patients. Help us all to be responsible in the things that we do in our lives to prevent the spread of the virus by taking heed of the recommended precautions and avoiding situations which may make things worse. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, Holy God, friend of those in need, your Son Jesus has loosened our burdens and healed our spirits. We lift before you those still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the Church and the world, especially in these difficult times. We especially pray for those listed on our bulletin. May they be healed by your infinite mercy in the knowledge that they are surrounded with the prayers of the faithful. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light which no darkness can quench. We remember before God those who have departed this life in thy faith and fear. And as we look at the candles on the altar, may they symbolise the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings hope. 
when we lose someone close, we feel that part of us dies as well. But part of them lives on in us. Give us strength and understanding to honour and cherish that gift. Especially we pray for those whose years might have occurred at this time. For Pauline Hubble, Derek Ingram Hill. For Betty Hill, for Audrey and Veronica Partridge. For Mary Gordon, Ernest Sendell Hall, Ethel Morgan, Linda Reese. For Margaret Webber, Reg Carter. Margaret Thompson, Richard Batten. Henry Kitchener and Ted Adams. Robert Worthy, Bernard Salisbury. Michael Dickey, Dorothy Crane. Michael Edward Mutslow and Alex Scallop. Help all those who are bereaved to find the same consolation, but in knowledge of your love, they may honour the past by looking to the future. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light which no darkness can quench, which eternally shines and brings hope. Lord, in your mercy. You have called us, O God, to be your people. You have loved us and chosen us for your own. Clothe us with your compassion, your kindness, your humility, your gentleness and your patience. Help us forgive one another as you have forgiven us, and bind us all together in the perfect unity of your love. Merciful Father, Please do stand for the peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, since as members of one body we are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And as we stand where we are, we turn and exchange a smile for a wave of peace with those around us. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. The is us. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise, and we join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and heart, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the the crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. 
Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing, honour, glory and power. Be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God. The body of Christ keep you all in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of all grace, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And so we remain seated for our notices. First of all, I've got a couple to give you that are not on the list. The first is to say that yesterday in church we baptised baby Ava. Uh, well, I say baby, she was about two and a half, I think. So she, um, so she was baptised yesterday. Sadly, in these current times, we've made the decision to do baptisms outside of the service. They're still only allowed to have um, 12 guests, if you include the people who are uh, myself and, and a verger to help me. So they have 12 guests and I can assure you that the church was wiped down after they'd gone. But how delightful that we had a, a baby.
they, a, a family who wanted to have their child baptised even with those restrictions. So please do hold Ava and Laura and Darren in your prayers. Um, we also have a celebration. I'm all for, I'm a very good, big one for celebrating things. Um, I, I knew the bishop, the retired bishop of Sheffield, Bishop Jack, and he always said there's only two problems with the Church of England. One is not enough prayer, and the second is not enough parties. So I always like to celebrate where we can. So um, we have had a, a, a member of this church who was honoured in the Queen's Honours List. She, uh, it was uh, Pat, Pat's daughter Sheridan. Is that I've got her name right? Yes. Sheridan. Now remind me, Pat. Was it an OBE or an MBE? Yeah, MBE. An MBE. So that's fantastic. So <laughs> pass on. Our congratulations to us. That's really wonderful news. And it's lovely to hear when people are um, honoured in that way. So do pass that on to her. So next Sunday, we only have one service between the two churches, and that is here at All Hallows, where we celebrate our joint patronal festival. And so it will be a Eucharist service at 10.30 next Sunday morning. Um, I'm delighted to say that Archdeacon Richard is coming to preach for us, so that, that's good news. Um, we are trying to make sure that we can accommodate everybody safely. So we're asking, we're not taking a register, but we are asking people to write their names down if they're intending to come so that we can plan seating so that everybody, um, we can accommodate everybody. Um, we will be using incense as well, so I don't know, um, I know this is a church that has used incense regularly, but just in case there is anybody who is, um, it, it doesn't, has an adverse reaction, I should say, to incense, just to pre-warn you that we'll be, we'll, we'll be using that next week. If you haven't put your name down already, could you, is the list still at the front? Oh, Michael's got the list. If you could let Michael know, that would be really helpful for our planning. In the afternoon next Sunday, we have um, an All Souls service at four o'clock at All Saints. It'll be slightly different this year. It's, it's going to be held on Sunday afternoon and it won't be um, a requiem mass. It will be a service of the word. Um, if you would like somebody to be remembered at that service, then please do write their name down on the list at the front. Um, if you would like to come along, again, please do. Um, we are hopeful that we, we, we know that we can accommodate um, at least 60 in the church. So uh, please do come along if you'd like to for that very quiet service of remembering the departed. Finally, Compline. We are doing Compline via Zoom. Um, if you are interested in joining us, it's six o'clock every Sunday, and this is a joint, this involves people from All Hallows and All Saints. Uh, please either speak to Reverend Christine or I, and we can make sure that you get the relevant uh, link. And I think that's all of the notices I've got. Oh, Michael's got one. Just a couple of uh, practical uh, announcements with regard to uh, next Sunday. Um, I think I've got a pretty good list of uh, everyone uh, who wants to come, and I can first of all uh, reassure you that we will be able to fit you all in uh, in a suitable manner. Uh, we will probably be doing a detailed seating plan, so don't be surprised if when you arrive you're told you will sit by number 12, or whatever it may be. It would be extremely helpful if everyone arrived at least 15 minutes before the start of the service uh, so that we can see you uh, in comfort and in a orderly fashion without too much keen. But under all circumstances, you will all be most welcome. Very welcome. Thank you. And we pray for the times when we won't have to, to worry about these things, but while we do, let's all work together to make it happen. Christine. Oh, can I just give one? Yes, of course you can. Just to say, I have um, six spare advent calendars. It's the real advent calendar with uh, fair trade chocolate. They um, I have six that I don't need, which I'm very happy to drop off to anyone. 3 dollars So if you would like one for a, a 
uh, a godchild or a grandchild or for yourself, um, please uh, let me know and I can uh, arrange that for you. Thank you, Christy. And the chocolate's lovely, I can just uh, recommend that to you. And that they are lovely, um, they, they tell the story beautifully as well, so highly recommended. So shall we stand for the blessing? The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all and those you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace and be at peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.